Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 13. It's written, Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God into a perfect man unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Our request is that all believers would excel in their knowledge of the Son of God. These are, these are things too high for the thoughts of man, except that God would reveal himself and give us a cause to, to have a desire for this. That man without revelation can, can look and see that there is someone I say someone because it requires intelligence and personality and knowledge to create the things that we see. But how, how would a man come to the conclusion to desire the knowledge of the Son of God? Even, even under the law, they, there were those who sought after God. But knowledge of the Son of God is something specific to the New Covenant. And we behold the glory, the brightness of God's glory and, and the knowledge of his glory in the face of Jesus Christ. This is, this is where God is most clearly seen. This is where God is most uh, readily discerned. This is where God is most access, accessible, is in the Son. For us to ask that, that the saints would excel in the knowledge of the Son of God is nothing short of coming to God himself. Because this is the only means by which we may approach unto his throne in glory. Not at an arm's distance. This is where we come to God himself in a way that is unaccessible any other place. A man would be consumed if he tried to come any other way. This is the way of safety in seeking after glory. This is the way that, that we are given grace. We're given everything that is necessary to, to make that transition from where we have begun to where we desire to be, which is in the very presence of God Amen. without any veil between without anything that would defile us or cause us to shrink back from his presence or to cause his displeasure or condemnation toward us. This is the blessed place in the Son, and we come to him through knowledge of him. Knowledge about him, perhaps first, but knowledge of him as we believe those things that are revealed and actually are, are made partakers of the entire Godhead through our access in Him. This is a very high request. And this is a very blessed request. To request anything else as it relates to coming to the Father is vanity. And it's uh, displeasing to God. But this is a request that God would be very pleased to, in fact, forward. He's made the way for us to have what we're asking for. And so we would voice our desire for ourselves and for saints throughout the earth that God's people would indeed excel in the knowledge of his son, which will make us everything that he has purposed us to be. Who will we'll pray for that? Brother Jeremy, Brother Gene, Brother Matthew. All right, thank you. Colossians 1 and verse 9. It is written, For this cause we also, since the day we heard of it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Now we're asking the Lord that all saints everywhere would possess the knowledge of his will. Now the, the closer you get to the Father, the the more apparent his will is going to be. The more it pleases him to reveal himself and his purpose to you, the more apparent his purpose will be. He's revealed a great deal. 
there there is a there is a will and a purpose that is actually propounded in scripture i mean he's he's not been secretive to those that that uh, come to uh, by faith to what is written but there's a confidence uh i kind of alluded to this last week whenever i was talking about the, the way that we order our prayers you sense in in scripture particularly in uh, men like Nehemiah and Samuel, Moses, Daniel, the apostles, even the early saints, that they they were able to to um, discern, kind of like the uh, sons of Issachar, men able to discern the times. They were able to apprehend something about what God was doing so that they didn't, they didn't, wasn't like a vague, I don't know how to go any further than this, not sure how to be specific in the way I pray. I know that generally your will is, is to do right and that you're a righteous God and that'll help us, that'll take us a long way, though, that knowledge. But to walk with the Lord in such a way that you have more, more of a knowledge akin to the knowledge that Christ had with the Father. He knew what the Father wanted. He heard the Father's words. He saw what the Father was doing. There was that, there was that, uh, that unity with the Father that existed in him, even when he walked on the earth in the, in the likeness of flesh. Now I realize that we have in measure the things that Christ possessed, but like I said, you hearken back to those those prophets and and men of faith of old and there were times whenever it's just like they were able to look and just take hold of what was going on and exactly how to pray about it what God was doing where he was going how to order their cause and there was there was no uncertainty in their prayers they were bold in their prayers the early Christians whenever they prayed that the Lord would give them boldness they didn't say, what do you think we ought to ask for? What do you think God might be doing? Well, let's kind of pray in this area. Or, well, see, now, not just in prayers, but in our lives. Whenever we meet people, to be able to walk in such a way as to know whether or not some a word should be spoken and what word would be fit. When it's time to pray, when it's time to do something else, when it's time to step forward, when it's time to to hold our people, whatever it is. This, this uh, prayer, possessing the knowledge of his will, see, we are actually living out the will of the Father. We've got to know what we're doing. We have to know the one that we're serving. This is a, this is a walking close with the Lord in a very discerning way request. That's what this is. And all of God's people, this why God doesn't hold us at an arm's length. That was such a wonderful revelation to me one day whenever I learned that, that God, there, he calls. But if he's given you grace to come, he doesn't say come and then hold his hand out and keep you at a distance. Amen. When God says come, he means come. Well, he's bidden us to come, and we don't want to stop short of the grace that, that he has provided for us to, to, to come to that point. God will be known. He's called us to that purpose. We want to enter into that purpose. And we want to boldly, with, see, bold, boldness doesn't exclude humility. Boldness acknowledges the work of God in Christ Jesus and glorifies God. We want to come boldly and we want to ask for the fulfillment of this request and for it to be very obvious. No tentativeness here. And it's not, this isn't making it up as you go or, or promoting any kind of, uh, any kind of uh, pretend. God is real. The union that we have with God is real in Christ Jesus. So there really is no excuse for his people to walk ignorantly or 
in, in a cloud of, uh, of delusion. God will show us, but we have to draw near. We want to draw near in this also, all of God's people, that we would possess the knowledge of his will. Who will lead us in that? It's a bold prayer. Brother Tony, Brother Aaron. All right. Finally, brethren, 1 Timothy 2 and verse 4. Let me see. 1 Timothy. Who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. Now, our final request this evening is that all men would come to the knowledge of the truth. When does a man know something? When he first hears it? Is it, is it kind of like uh, math facts? Two times three is six? Okay, I know that. Is it uh, trees are made of wood? Is that, is that truth? What is the knowledge of the truth? And when does a man come to it? We all know that truth is revelation. There are eternal verities. But when does a man come to it? Does he come to it whenever he reads it? No, because there are, are many people who can quote portions, sometimes large portions, of what is written, and yet they have not come to the knowledge of that truth. They've, they've come to the form of that truth contained in words. Our prayer is that all men would come to the knowledge of the truth. We're asking for faith in this. This is, this is comprehended in the knowledge of the truth. We're asking for, for God to open it up to us. He's revealed it as far as giving us the truth as it's written. But then there's a further revelation that's required for us to really come to the knowledge of the truth. And that is that the Spirit of God work with our spirit to give us an understanding of it. And a not, not, again, this, we're not talking academics. I don't despise it. A good mind is to serve the Lord. The only reason we have a brain is so that we can, we can feel after God. It's for knowing the Lord, for processing this knowledge in a way that is profitable to us and to others. But, but this knowledge of God is not limited to academics. I've seen some people who others would call simple as far as their, their abilities in maybe what some people call book learning. But they knew God, and that was a higher knowledge than the ones that despise them. Amen. And I've known other men, you know, Brother John Calvin. Uh, he was a man of great, great ability, and he gave it to the Lord, and it yielded a, a lot of fruit. That was the knowledge. that He had come to the knowledge of the truth, and it made his abilities fruitful. So we're asking, see, it's a shame for God to be uh, identified, when I say ignorant, again, I'm not talking about matters of education so much as I am about matters of spiritual knowledge. Yeah. It is a shame for men to try to identify God with an ignorant people because he's not an ignorant God and because he's very copious in his his giving of himself to those that, that love him and come to him in faith. There is no reason at all for anyone to whom God has revealed himself and has given faith to walk in ignorance, but rather to come to the knowledge of the truth. Tonight as we gather, would it, would our, our goals comprehend all of these requests? And we really have a desire to come to a fuller extent, to the knowledge of that truth. The faith of the brethren, the environment here, assists us in coming to the knowledge of the truth, Amen. rehearsing the truth, 
and speaking about it, imbibing it again in, in all forms, through reading, through hearing, through speaking, in, involving us, even taking notes, you know, of what is said and things. What are we after? We're after the knowledge of the truth. So we want this blessing for ourselves. We covet it most earnestly for ourselves and for all our brethren because we love them too and because we would that our God be glorified in his church. So who will lead us in that request? Brother Robert. Brother Isaac, Sister Annie, Brother Judah, thank you very much, brethren. Brother Robert has our, our message tonight. Um, Brother Jonathan, I'm going to ask you to, to say a special prayer for Brother Robert before he comes up to preach.